Okay, I have actually have 16 pockets in this vest. This vest is a customized vest. It holds many, many items. And I'll tell you the truth, I'm a hell of a fly fisherman and I've got a hell of a lot of fly fishing paraphernalia. You could say I'm stuck to the gills, if you will, if you don't mind a little clever pun that I like to throw out at a lot of my people that listen to what I'm talking about. I'll start on the inside of the vest. Tell you, yeah, see, we got right down here on the bottom. If you see on each side of the vest, I have uh, these little pockets here that were designed for holding tippet spools. Now, tippet is the material that is used at the end of the fly leader. For those of you who are not too well versed in English, if you will. So we'll take a look inside this first one here. I got, oh my God, I've got some 6X. Now this 6X is a very narrow diameter. But if you'll notice, I'll show you right here, this is 6X tippet material, seven pound test. This is a very strong tippet material. This is called Climax. It's new out on the market these days. And I haven't used it yet because it requires a peculiar knot that I'm not very well versed in at this point. Over here, I've got another tippet spool. Oh my God, this one here is a, also a 6X, but if you'll notice, this 6X is only 1.4 pound test. Not quite as strong. It's a, it's a 0 .005 diameter. Very narrow, very thin, very light and limp, which is good for very small flies on very small, very calm water, excuse me. Okay, next we'll go into uh, the pocket on the inside here. I have a zippered pocket right here, if you'll take a look. And uh, I've got a number of gadgets in here. Many things that most fly fishermen can do or do without, for all I care. But I like to carry a lot of things because it makes me feel special. It makes me feel like an elitist, which I am, because I'm a fly fisherman, of course. I belong to a very exclusive club. Uh, most of you wouldn't understand this, of course, because you're not fly fishermen. But I'll take a look inside here and see what we've got. <clears throat> First of all, I've got something here which is called a uh, opera glasses. <laughs> Why would I have opera glasses in a fly vest? What would a fly fisherman do with opera glasses? Well, we'll take a look inside of here. Hey, what you do with this little gadget? You see, this is just like a binoculars. But what it's used for is for spotting insects on the surface of the water when they're too far out. Us fly fishermen are very interested in seeing what we are fishing with, or what the fish are eating, if you will, excuse me. So all I have to do is take this handy little gadget and peer out, just like I'm peering out at you right now, all of you non-fly fishermen. I can pick out what kind of flies I want to use for my trout fishing day. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll put this back in now. Hold this little guy up. Now, I have a lot of uh, plastic bags inside of my vest, you'll notice, and that's to keep everything dry in case I do take a spill. Okay, in here I've got, for safety reasons, of course, these are some band-aids. A lot of times you'll get cut when you're out on the stream, but if you're five, six miles from your car and you get cut, you got to have something to just, you know, wrap that thing up. <coughs> All right. Inside, inside of here I got also a little net. This is actually a modified from a minnow net. This net here is used for capturing insects on the surface of the water. Again, a tool very necessary for fly fishermen uh, to decipher what kind of insects the trout are eating. Okay, going down inside here, what do we find? Uh, okay, here, this is a very important tool. This here is a thermometer, a stream thermometer. It's designed for taking the temperature of the water. Very important to know. By the way, 65 degrees is about the optimum temperature for feeding for trout. So if this baby's on 65, I'm out there and I'm ready to go. Down the bottom here, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got myself a knife. Now a lot of people are probably thinking, why would a fly fisherman, a little purist fly fisherman, have a knife in his vest? Well, there are many reasons for this. And I'll admit that every now and then I may kill a trout. It's, it's once in a blue moon, but if I kill a trout, I gotta have some way to clean that son of a gun. Let's see what's down at the bottom here. I've got a couple of vials inside of here that I use for, for holding specimens of insects so that I can take these home. I actually do sometimes pick up these things to, to use as a, a little model for the flies that I tie, or sometimes I'll just look at them because I'm interested in the insects. Eh, call me nuts, I don't know. All right, what do we got down at the bottom here? Now this one's about empty now. I think, uh, yeah, we have uh, oh, one more thing, just some plastic bags. Not a bad idea to have these in the vest as well because sometimes you can use these for carrying different things. Again, if I were to kill a trout, I don't want to have slime all over my vest, so I'll put them inside of this bag. All right, I'm wearing the sunglasses right now that go inside of this pocket. You notice all my pockets have Velcro on them. This is the, this is the sunglasses pocket. Inside of here is this little handy holder with a draw cord. Very important tool for the fly fisherman. Keeps things at fingers grasp and also keeps them from falling into the water. This here is a little clipper used for clipping the end of my line. Maybe clipping a fly line or maybe for clipping a fly off of the line. It's a very nice little gadget. On the back side, if you notice, 
right here, there is a little sharp needle on the end of this thing here, which you can use for cleaning glue from the inside of your, your fly eye, okay? A lot of times, sloppy fly tires will leave glue, or head cement, if you will, inside of their, uh, their eyes of their hook, and you can't get your leader through there. On this side, I've got a little pocket here. This is called my, my leader pocket. This is filled with a number of leaders. I'll pull them out for you. Okay, I've got a whole bunch of leaders here. We are talking about the, uh, the diameters. Okay, I've got 5X, of course, a number of those. I've got a 4X here, a couple of 4X, and 3X, a very heavy diameter. And if you dig through here, you'll see there actually are some 8X tippets. 8X is a very fine tippet, and they're very difficult tippets to use because they'll break off quite often. Uh, sometimes in the jaws of a nice fish, other times in the tree. A lot of, you know, I have to say, more than, more than often, uh, I get my fly stuck in a tree and then I have to break off my tippet. Okay, down on this side, I've got some uh, more tippet material, all right? Lots of tippet material. It's very important because you're always changing flies and tippets, then a lot of times you'll break off your fly and you got to tie a new tippet on. This is a 5X tippet. I talked about that earlier. 5X is a very nice tippet size because of the fact that it's a little bit in between. It's a, it's a small, small diameter tippet, but it's also a rather strong tippet. 4X, this is a little bit heavier. You want to use this for using larger nymphs and streamers, okay? All right, we'll go down inside the other pocket here. This one's filled with a lot of gadgets. I'm very interested in gadgets. Fly fishermen are very into gadgets. Fly fishermen have a lot of money. They can buy a lot of gadgets. Most of you can. All right, this is kind of an interesting thing right here. This is actually just a yard stick, if you will. And uh, what you do is you can, you, you can straighten this thing out to measure your fish, okay? But then if you don't want to keep this thing all extended like this, you just bang that baby, it rolls right up. All right, I've got a little problem here. And uh, put this guy back inside of the vest. It's a matter of minutes. Okay, get that back inside the vest, and it's, it's all wrapped away, and no one, no, I got a yard inside of me. Okay, this is some uh, silicone dry fly dressing. You put this on your fly if you are trying to keep it from sinking. It's a very nice kind of thing for treating dry flies so that you have uh, the, uh, the ability to keep them very buoyant during uh, heavy fishing experiences. Uh, down inside of here I've got uh, another little vial containing some, some little connectors for connecting fly line to lot uh, for the, uh, excuse me, connecting the fly line to the leader. Uh, right here, very important thing is a hook cone. Hook cones are used for sharpening hooks, of course. Uh, a, hook, a very sharp hook is a very important thing to have when you're fly fishing. Okay, here we have some very basic little uh, flyers. These come from Radio Shack. They're, they're relatively lightweight, and they're also relatively strong. They're good for crimping down barbs on hooks in areas that require barbless hooks, or they're also good for removing the uh, hook from a fish's jaw. Let's see what else I got down inside of here. <clears throat> okay, here's something here. This, I haven't used these yet myself, and actually I'm not that fond of them. They're really not that much... Uh, more than a glorified kitty bobber, to tell you the truth. But what they are is they're, uh, they're called uh, pinch-on floats or strike indicators. They're used a lot like a bobber. You put them onto your leader so that you can watch your line, and if you, a fish hits, you can see it submerge, and you set the hook. Very basic, very basic. Something that I'm sure a lot of you would understand quite well. Okay, what have we got down here? Oh, these are an interesting gadget. These actually here are folding scissors. You can take these things and you unfold them, if you see, very slowly. Uh, yes, there. And you got yourself a pair of scissors. Not a bad idea to have inside of the vest for a number of things. Doctoring up flies and whatnot. Okay, make sure I get those closed up correctly and put those back in there. Everything's got its place inside this vest. Uh, there's also inside of this vest a little container here of, of sinkers. These are sinkers used for when you want to get down deep to where the fish usually are. If you'll notice on the back here, it says non-toxic. These are non-toxic weights. They're, uh, right now there's a big debate going on whether or not uh, it's important to use lead weights or non-toxic weights. The non-toxic weights, of course, are better because of the fact that you're not going to have problems then with waterfowl and other animals eating them. Yeah, now I want to show you the outside of my vest. This is the, uh, the part that I usually use most. Uh, if you take a look here, I've got exactly one, two, three, four, five, six pockets on the outside front of my vest. Put out inside these, these are called bellows pockets. Bellows because they are large and they have actually a three-dimensional shape to them. Uh, on this side I've got my large dry fly box. Okay, this holds a number of different larger flies. In uh, this pocket, actually I'm going to be uh, using this box mostly for the flies that I'll be fishing with in larger water. Okay, 
Uh, it's not always true, but for most of the time it's for larger flies, maybe fishing for in the larger western rivers, uh, maybe during the larger mayfly hatches that occur sometimes on some of the midwestern streams. We're moving now over to uh, this section over here. This is uh, where I have my other bellows pocket. I keep other larger flies again. These are streamers and large nymphs, okay? These flies are used for, again, many, many situations, but a lot of times they're used for bigger water and also for larger fish and deeper water. Uh, these flies here are stonefly nymphs again. These are invented by a fellow named, Hen uh, excuse me, uh, Dave Whitlock. And uh, this is called a Whitlock's black stonefly. If you see this thing, it's a very large size four, heavily weighted nymph. Uh, that imitates the uh, the large stoneflies of the Western Rivers. This is a woolly bugger. Uh, this fly actually is uh, used for many situations, but it's, it most commonly it imitates a leech in the water. This fly here was invented by a friend of mine who lives out in West Virginia. He just calls it the green thing. They're very good. They look somewhat like a uh, dragonfly nymph, but they also work as a nice tractor pattern. These are very famous flies. These have been around for many, many years. They're an American-born fly. They're called uh, muddler minnows, and they imitate the commonly imitate uh, a small minnow that lives on the bottom of the stream called a sculpin. Uh, over here we have some attractor type patterns, uh, large minnow type patterns, I should say. Uh, some of them are not meant to imitate any specific type of minnow, but here we have one called the black nosed dace, a very common minnow in many of the trout streams throughout the U.S. Okay. Now we're moving on to the upper part of the vest. <clears throat> In these two breast pockets here, I keep a lot of my most commonly used smaller flies. On this side, I have a small box, which actually is a very nice box. If you notice, the bottoms of this box are rounded, so it's easier to pull flies out. In here, I keep my smallest types of dry flies. I have some small blue winged olives in here, which is a type of mayfly, some emerger patterns, which are flies that are just about to hatch on the surface of the water. Uh, some, some more, uh, I guess you'd call these attractor type patterns, but actually they're, they really just kind of uh, imitate a number of flies. They're called Dorado's hare's ears. And over on this side I have some Adam's flies. They're very common. Uh, in this pocket here we have some small bluing olives again. And these are some trico spinners. The spinner is the mayfly, I'll show you. Is the, 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 uh, the portion of the mayfly's life where it, it dies and it, and it lays its eggs. If I can get one of these little, little guys out of here. It's a very small fly. It's actually tied on a size 26 fly hook. Most of you probably have never seen a hook this small, since most of you are probably don't fish with flies, and most of you probably have no interest in them. Uh, but if you take a look at this, the wings on this fly are actually tied in a spent fashion, which means that they are actually laying on the water surface ready to die. They're very small flies, and they're very difficult to, to see in the surface film, but they're actually very good. Uh, this box here contains most of my small dry flies that are used in most Midwestern streams. Again, I have blueing olives. I have some no-hackle blueing olives, which are used for some very uh, tight situations where the fish are being selected. Uh, I have some pale morning duns. I have some different various various kinds of caddis flies. And uh, actually I have also some, some again, tra attractor type patterns in there. On this side of the vest, you can see right here, I have something holding this lid down. By the way, these, these pockets on this vest have, are designed to have hooded pockets so that if I were to be flipped upside down, the things would not fall out because they are actually hooded pockets. Okay. Inside here, I keep a lot of my very small nymphs. Nymphs, are, of course, are the, the, uh, the type of uh, flies that are used to imitate uh, the insect that spends, uh, actually most of these aquatic insects that trout eat, spend a great deal of their time below the surface and they only live a few days after they hatch into adults and you see them flying around and lighting on the surface of the creek. So these are these are these are uh, actually going to be imitating the nymph uh, of these various insects and there are, there are various small sizes in here all the way from uh, oh I say size 28 up to size 16. This little uh, <coughs> box here is my terrestrial box. Terrestrial, of course, referring to the fact that these insects mostly live on land. I have ants in here, beetles, uh, flying ants, uh, some inchworms, and of course some grasshoppers. I'll show you the grasshoppers and crickets. This here is a variation of, of a, a cricket pattern that I, I've, I've actually changed from, from the, uh, the more typical leetor cricket, but I've, I've tied this with an all fur head. Okay, now moving on. 
The pockets up here on the top here are, are, are my probably least seldom used pockets on the top or outside portion of the vent. However, this one here holds my nymphs. And I was explaining these a little bit earlier to some of you. I, I thought I'd go over this again, though, because I felt that it was very interesting. And I want to show you that uh, I have actually a number of smaller nymphs on this side of the box. And uh, these are just some mixed up little things here that I use for various attractors. And uh, again, here, these are a hodgepodge of different attractor type nymphs and nymphs that would imitate a plethora of different insects. Mm. Moving to this side of the vest, uh, I have in this top pocket uh, a little container here that I often will uh, put an insect into again, okay, if I want to save an insect. And uh, inside here I also have something that's used to straighten out the leader material. Uh, it's a piece of rubber that you, you'll run over the leader and that will straighten out all the kinks and different bends. Monofilament tends to have a, a very high degree of memory uh, which means that when it's wrapped around the reel, those coils that are formed by wrapping around the reel make this thing like a bed spring when you pull that thing out and you got to straighten it out. That's what this gadget's for right here. I've also got inside here my floatant. This is why this is called Cortland Dab. It's fly floatant. And I showed you a little container of that before. It looked like a chapstick uh, applicator. But this is actually just a softer uh, cream that you rub on your fly to keep them buoyant. It's also silicone based. Okay, now, I'm going to reach around to the back side of me here to show all of you. I have actually, I'm going to turn, if you don't mind, the, uh, my back. This actually here is the uh, place where I keep my net. Uh, this is the uh, little clip right here, which I call a, uh, this is called, excuse me, the French clip. And I can just put that big on around here. And this is the, the trout net that I prefer to use. I actually made this net on my own. And uh, if you'll see, there's a little attachment to the top side of the net top side of the net attachment is good because then if this net is going to be used in brush, the netting will not get caught on twigs and whatnot. Uh, it's a very lightweight net. It's small if you'll notice, but it actually will handle most situations of fishing in the smaller streams that I, that I fish. Put this right back up here with no problem. Okay. If you'll notice also on the back of my vest, I've got the access if you replace any different things from my, oh, I can see it my, my rain jacket or my lunch. And then there's also a small pocket right back here with my flywheel. Um, I won't take that out right now, though, because I'd, I'd rather not throw my shoulders out of whack, if you don't mind. And as far as I'm concerned, most of you probably couldn't give a hooey whether or not I show you my fly reel or not. Uh, I'm going to show you also that I am wearing some waders right now. These are neoprene waders. They're very nice waders. You can see that most waders are, are large and cumbersome. You notice that if you were paying any attention to any of the other uh, fishing situations in your life, you might have seen people wearing waders at some point. The big clumsy rubber waders uh, that most people wear are, are very uncomfortable and actually they're not as durable and they're also, as I said before, very cumbersome and they tend to make you feel uncomfortable when you get into the water because of the fact that they bind around your ankles, they bind around your crotch and they dig at you all day like a pack of hungry dogs. Now, what I've got out here are these neoprenes. They're very stretchy. If you notice here, you can stretch, I can stretch it out. I can do this all day long. Look at that. Go around the world with that, huh? Okay. Also wearing a pair of waders that are called stocking foot waders. You notice on the, on the bottom here of my feet, I've got, uh, I've got boots on the bottom of these waders. These boots actually come off of the waders. I'll just take that off to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, slip that foot out of there. And you actually got a stocking foot on the bottom of the wader. See that? Okay. Now, looking, paying attention, I gotta get this back on my foot. Uh, excuse me. A little time. So I can get back in these puppies in no time. I got Velcro straps on these, if you notice that. Uh, it goes up nice and tightly. All right. Well, if you have no further questions, I'd like to thank you all for uh, listening to me today. And uh, just remember that uh, I know a lot more about fly fishing than most of you ever could dream of. <clears throat> and uh, I'm just out here to let you know what I know.
right, thank you very much. I want to tell you right now that I'm going to need your undivided attention because I've got a lot to say, and as you are well aware, you don't have a lot of time. So I want to start talking about the exterior of my vest. Uh, this is my, my front side of my vest, which is the area that I use quite often, or I should say most often. It holds a number of pockets. As you see, I have six pockets along the outside of my vest. 